Hi, this is John Linnebaugh from John Linnebaugh Tutoring, and this is how to study for the SAT and ACT American Idiom Part 3, Crazy Stupid Words and Phrases. And I'm John Linnebaugh, John Linnebaugh Tutoring. You can email me at john at johnlinnebaugh.com, and you can see my website, www.johnlinnebaugh.com, and you can call or text me at 415-623-4251, or call me on my landline at 415-986-7355. So this is the same introduction I have to the other two videos I've made so far. So if you've already seen those, feel free to fast forward a little bit over these. What on earth is idiom anyway? Here's the definition I got by Googling idiom on October 18th, 2018. It's a group of words established by usage as having a meaning not deducible from those of the individual words. That is to rain cats and dog, see the light, something like that. Idiom sounds a lot like idiot, which is why I use that clip from American Idiot at the beginning of all of these. It's a coincidence, but much like an idiot, idiom often doesn't make sense. For example, British and Australian YouTubers often use different to rather than different from or different them, which would be the American idiom. Since the SAT and ACT are both given by U.S. companies and meant for U.S. college admissions, they generally use American idiom. Idiom is related to diction, or idiom can lead to addiction. Ha ha ha. Another way to see it is that idiom is just the way of saying things. It's diction. Diction can be defined as a style of speaking or writing determined by the choice of words by a speaker or writer. Diction, or choice of words, often separates good writing from bad writing. It depends on a number of factors. First, the word has to be right and accurate. And it also should be appropriate for your audience. So diction is an important part of setting the correct tone of your writing. I'll do a separate video on this later, I promise. Selecting the correct words, that is proper diction, is very important. And knowing the proper idiom for the audience you are addressing is part of proper diction. Idioms can be used as euphemisms. So we know an idiomatic phrase, an idiom consisting of more than one word, may be difficult or impossible to understand simply by understanding its words. But the nice thing about those things is idioms can express ideas in fresh and creative ways that literal words may not. And they may be particular to a certain culture where the, you know, everyone shares a certain set of ideas so they understand what these things mean. Now, a euphemism has been defined as a mild or indirect word or expressions substituted for one considered to be too harsh or blunt when referring to something unpleasant or embarrassing. Google accessed December 31st, 2018, that's today at 3.12 p.m. Idioms are often used as euphemisms, that is, nicer words, to describe unpleasant people, things, conditions, etc., or to avoid being rudely direct, that is, harsh or blunt. <coughs> Excuse me. You, there are euphemisms we can use for crazy, and there are certain idioms we could use. So one common one in American English is to say that something is a few blank short of a blank. So there are many euphemisms to describe a person that's mildly mentally ill or unbalanced or perhaps a bit stupid, all of which follow the preceding pattern. He's a few sandwiches short of a picnic. So here we see this here, a few sandwiches short of a picnic. She's a few tiles short of a roof. He's a few bricks short of a full load. So here we show a load of bricks. And you can make up your own idioms. I've heard a few, like, he's a few French fries short of a value meal. So, <coughs> excuse me. Any of those things could work as a euphemism for crazy or stupid. So there are more crazy idioms um, related to the whole, you're a few, you know, you're a few inches short of a yard, something like that. It, you can say something like, you're not playing with the full deck, the cheese fell off his cracker. The idea is that something important is missing, so the person's not quite complete. So we have the Calvin and Hobbes cartoon, which was below, but I moved it over here. I'm not playing with the full deck, says Calvin, and Hobbes says, huh, that's what people say. And here we can see an image of a deck of cards where the box isn't full. So whoever's using this card to play cards, or this deck to play cards, I should say, is not playing with the full deck. There are even more crazy idioms. He or she isn't all there. The person's obviously not concentrating on things going on around him or her, probably because he or she is distracted by mental illness. There was a Mad Magazine parody of the old movie Being There called Being Not All There. Um, also, if somebody's mentally ill, you could say he or she is really out there, someone who seems like they're very distant from others as a result of their abnormal, crazy thinking. So physically, they're right there. Mentally, they're out on another plane. So here's a funny button I found online. We're here because we're not all there. Ha ha ha, aren't we wacky people? And here's some things that are out there. 
And here's somebody who's not quite all there. He's missing a little puzzle in his brain there, a little puzzle piece. And stupid idioms. Okay, so some of these can be euphemisms. You know, you're not the blankest object in the place where you'd find such objects. So you might describe somebody who's stupid as describing that person as an object that doesn't have as much of a quality as that object should have as others. I know that's kind of vague, so let's talk about it. He's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Oh, I, okay, so he's kind of dull. He's not as bright as other people, or he's not as sharp as other people, I should say. She's not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree. Ah, so she's not quite as bright as the others. He's not the sharpest saw in the tool shed. So you can see where that's going. You can make up your own idioms there. And here's a couple little cartoons. I may be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm still just a knife in a drawer. That's another perspective on it. And then here's one. This guy's a few cowboys short of a rodeo. Yeah, he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Well, when I said never bring a knife to a gunfight, I figured the spoon and the fork were also implied. So that's kind of funny. So that leads us to a few asides regarding stupidity, ignorance, and impulsiveness. So never bring a knife to a gunfight. Of course, that means make sure that you've prepared properly before you start a job or enter into any kind of confrontation with other people. Uh, don't take any wooden nickels. Don't be not gullible, naive, foolish, or stupid. Yes, there have actually been issues where banks ran out of real money, so they gave people wooden nickels, I guess, as certificates so they could get real nickels later. Nickels, as the name would imply, are made out of nickel the metal. And if you're playing poker and you look around the table and can't tell who the sucker is, it's you. That's attributed to Paul Newman. So basically, don't gamble if you aren't experienced enough not to be exploited by the other players. And if you can't tell who the sucker is, chances are you're the sucker, which is one real reason I don't like gambling. So there are idioms regarding rudeness and impulsivity. First, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It means don't examine a gift for faults. It's really rude if someone's giving you something. And you're like, eh, what's wrong with it? I actually had a neighbor who did that once when I offered her a gift. He's like, oh, what, did someone give it to you and you didn't like it? So... That's not nice. Don't be that person. Look before you leap. Well, literally, you should look before you leap because you want to make sure you're not jumping into rocks that are in the water if you're going to jump into a lake or something like that. Um, or look both ways for cars before you walk across the street. I'm sure your mother taught you that when you were little. And see also measure twice, cut once. So here we have a humorous, ha ha ha, this person didn't measure twice and cut once, so it's cut off. And then think before you start bending metal. Here's a guy bending metal. That's really common in auto body shops is you want to make sure you know what you're doing before you start bending auto panels and things like that. Otherwise, you may end up paying for replacement parts for the car that you are working on. Other idioms for stupid or ignorant. If you're slow on the uptake, well, it means you don't process information as quickly as other people or you don't understand what it means as quickly as other people. His or her education was nipped in the bud. Well, literally, when you nip a part of a plant in the bud, you nip a bud off it, you're pruning it so that bud doesn't grow so the rest of the plant can be stronger. Um, but that means that flower doesn't grow at all or it only grows a little bit if its bud was nipped. So note that ignorance and stupidity are not the same thing. Ignorance is not knowing a fact. Ignorance is curable through education. Stupidity is a bit harder to cure because it's being unable to make logical choices using the facts. So it's very frustrating when you're dealing with somebody who's stupid because it's hard to do something about it. So hopefully most people you run into are ignorant rather than stupid when you run into that problem. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please see the first two American Idiom videos in this series, if you haven't already, in this series, I should say. And please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Please contact me at john at johnlinnebal.com, or you can contact me at my cell phone or on my cell phone at 415-623-4251 if you have any questions or suggestions. And please contact me if you're interested in academic tutoring, either in person, San Francisco Bay Area, or online. Thank you. I do also travel sometimes to foreign countries such as Australia or England or Canada or Southern California, you know, parts of the United States, of course. So if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one tutoring but you're not in Northern California, let me know and we might be able to arrange something. And of course, I'm always happy to tutor you online. All right, that's it for now. Have a nice day.